In this lesson, we're going to have a look at multi-view drawings, also called orthographic drawings. Orthographic drawings show a three-dimensional object in a series of two-dimensional drawing views. This is a very accurate way of showing the different features of a design, since 3D drawing views tend to look at the object from an angle, which skews the edges and surfaces of the object. By looking at the object one 2D side at a time, we can easily add dimensions and communicate the specifics of the part or object to the person who's going to build it. For this reason, orthographic drawings are usually the preferred type of drawing when communicating with the manufacturer. Every object has six main sides that might be shown in an orthographic. The front, back, top, bottom, left, and right sides. This example shows all six in the correct orientation. We'll talk more later about what correct orientation means. For most objects, it isn't necessary to show all six sides. Some may show as few as just one. The sides that are typically shown in an orthographic are the front, the top, and the right side views of the part. This example shows the front, top, and right side views with dimensions added. Dimensions are notes indicating the measurements of the object that manufacturers need to make the part the correct size and shape. We'll talk a lot more about dimensions later. This drawing also includes a 3D isometric view to help make sense of the three 2D views, but this extra view isn't always needed. To better understand orthographic drawings, you should know about the three dimensions being shown. All 3D objects have width, height, and depth. The width is how wide an object is from side to side, the height is the distance from top to bottom, and the depth is the distance from front to back. An orthographic drawing shows us all three, but you can only see two in any given view. Earlier I mentioned showing your orthographic views in correct orientation. This basically means showing them in the correct place on the page. Every drawing view has a correct spot on the page, and these views are determined by rotating the part in a certain way. If the part is rotated correctly, it results in correct orientation. This is what the rotation from the top view to the front view should look like. No matter what the object is, big or small, simple or complex, this rotation between front and top view always happens the same way. There should not be any extra rotations. Notice also that when the rotation is done correctly, the front and top views are lined up perfectly on the drawing. This is called view alignment and makes it easy for the reader to quickly identify features of the part from one view to the next. Drawings that are not aligned correctly can be hard to read. The rotation from the front view to the right side view works the same way. The part is turned from the front to show the right side view of the object. The front and side views are perfectly aligned, so one is not higher on the page than the other. These are the standard three views included in an orthographic drawing. If other surfaces of the part included details that can't be seen in these three views, then we might need to add a left, bottom, or back side view in order to show them correctly. These views are oriented correctly. Each one is in its correct spot on the page, and each has been rotated correctly from the front view. In this simulation, we can see the rotation more clearly. The front view should be placed in the lower left corner of the page. Then, the top and right side views are rotated based off the front view. Notice that in this drawing, the front of the car is shown in the right side view. This is because the side of the car was chosen as the best front view. We'll talk more later about how to choose the best front view for an orthographic drawing, but for now, realize that when it comes to selecting the best front view or right or left side drawing view, this may not always be the same as the front or left or right side of the object. It's more about what communicates most clearly on the page. On this drawing, the most detail about the car can be seen in the view of the car's side, so the side view of the car makes the best front view for our drawing, and all the other views simply come from the rotation. The isometric view shows the width, height, and depth of the object. The height of the object is obvious in the front view and in the right side view. The width is displayed in the front view and the top view, 
and the depth is shown in the top view and in the right side view. Orthographic views are created using a technique called orthographic projection. To understand how this works, imagine looking at the flat surface of an object through a clear piece of glass. You would see the surfaces of the object straight on, and you would be able to see the edges of the object. If you traced the edges of the object that you could see onto the glass, you would have a 2D orthographic view of that object. Because each orthographic view can only show two dimensions, there is always some information that can't be seen in an orthographic view. For this reason, we include additional views from different directions, and between all the views, the reader can find out everything they need to know about the object's height, width, and depth, and the size and location of any features of the part. If you imagine the object inside a glass box, you could trace the orthographic views of all six sides of the object onto each of the six sides of the box. If the box could then be unfolded and laid flat, you would have a complete orthographic drawing of the part in the correct orientation. Here we start with a house in the glass box. Then we see each of the six sides of the house get projected onto the walls of the box. Now we can see what happens if the box is unfolded and laid flat. The six orthographic projections are arranged into a six-view orthographic drawing of the house, with perfect alignment and orientation. The view of the side that provides the most information about the object is generally chosen as the front view. Finding the best front view of a part can be difficult. Two or more sides may look like the best solution for a front view. Here are a few guidelines that you can use when choosing the best front view for your object. The front view should show the object in its most natural or stable position. It should show the best shape or characteristic contours of the part. This should typically be the longest dimension of the part, which helps ensure that the views will all fit on the page after being rotated. And the front view should show as few hidden lines as possible. In this picture, the red arrow indicates the best front view of the object. The view from the opposite side would be similar, but would show a hidden line. Any other views would show the shorter dimensions of the object, or would fail to show the characteristic contour of the sloped surface. Some objects require only one orthographic view. In these cases, adding more views would be a waste of time and drawing space. So the minimum number of views required is ideal. For flat objects that are a uniform thickness, it would be appropriate to include only a front view where height and width can be shown, and to indicate depth using a note on the page. Other objects might require two orthographic views, like most cylindrical parts. In these cases, there's different information given in the top and front view, but a third view might be an exact repeat of another, so it isn't included. In a cylindrical part, the front view and right side view might be identical, so only one of them is necessary. There are a few steps you should follow when creating an orthographic drawing. It helps to use a straight edge and some light construction lines to help you lay out where your views should go and ensure that they are aligned properly. By aligning your views with a straight edge right from the start, it will be easier to fill in the details later. Keep your lines very light at first, since some will get darkened into object lines, and others will be erased when the sketch is finished. The outside edges of the drawing views are easy to locate, but you can also start to fill in other edges of the part. Keep in mind that many of these edges will be seen in more than one view, so you can draw them using lines that extend from one view to the next. Later you will darken the parts of the line that represent the object and erase any parts of the line that fall outside the view. The actual edges of the object can get darkened and made into sharp, bold object lines. You may need to locate other lines, such as hidden lines or center lines. When you have all the details filled in, you can erase the leftover construction lines, leaving only your drawing views. This image shows a patent drawing of a hunting blind shaped like a duck. Notice where the front 
top and right side views are in this drawing. Many patent drawings don't use correct view orientation, and it can get very confusing when you see the top view of the duck shown on bottom where the bottom view should be. When you look at these four shapes, you might notice that they're all the same basic size and color, but can you spot what else they have in common? All four of these objects have identical top views. Now that you know a thing or two about orthographic drawings, practice making some of your own so you can easily share your billion dollar ideas with the world. Good luck!